I don't know what's going on, but it's Alvin Wood will be used. Welcome to the map where I'm made in the Lord of the Rings, the battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22 in a Rohan Mirror matchup. Now, that's a matchup we barely see on this channel because usually I don't like the mirror matches. But if there is one mirror match that is quite interesting because of the diversity the faction offers, it has to be Rohan Mirror. Red versus Green. I mean, Rohan is a very powerful faction at each at every stage of the game. So basically early game you have barracks which is also a resource building at the same time and a proper peasant spam can you know give you the edge at the beginning of the game to snowball very hard into the mid to lead game. Lead game there are many options for the Rohan faction. You can go for the Rohirrim Arches, you can go for Elma, you can go for you know Glorious Charge, you can go for the Alvin Warriors, you can go for the hero spam like I mean, limitless, limitless amount of strategies. And let's see which player is going to choose which strategy, okay? So it's a 1v2 situation. The green has two peasants, but remember, you are fighting against a Rohan close to his farm. He will be able to reproduce peasants every 25 seconds. So, you know, it's going to be Fiesta. And there is one peasant sneaking through, but already I answer from this location. The Hobbit was barely able to get away by cloaking. And in the base, they have always one farm each. So West Amnet, definitely a proper matchup. A great map, I mean, because one settlement is always protected behind your castle. And in this matchup, nobody should really deal a lot of economical dam uh, damage to neither player. The peasant was able to win the fight, but there are only two peasants remaining. They shouldn't be able to do much. The farm here has been destroyed from the retro ham player. That's good. Stable up on the field. Losing the farm means you lose some of the food bonus, making your Rohirrim a bit more expensive, which you can see he can't afford it. This player, on the other hand, this is going to be Zemix. Zemix, I believe he's going to go for a hero. Elma could be a you know good option. But I don't think you need to go for heroes at the beginning of the game. I think it's better to go for the horses first and go for the heroes later. Because heroes can't secure you the map control, you know? That's something you always gotta keep in mind. A 1v2 situation, but some of the peasants are not able to attack. That's why the red Rohan player is able to win the fight. And more peasants are coming from the green Rohan player. Including a hobbit. He's actually spamming lots of peasants. This peasant got level 2. Because the other peasants were not able to attack. That's kinda unfortunate. I think he was cash looting, okay. I mean, he had like a thousand by the time he built the stable. So he was cash looting big time. Beautiful trample into the peasants, no problemo. For the Rohirrim warriors, the Hobbit was able to get Cloak. Now, usually when you see Gondor against Rohan, after such a start for the for the Rohan, he might go for the end mood. But end mood is very risky against Rohan because Rohan is a hero that gives you leadership right off the bat. And this is going to be Theoden. So Theoden's leadership plus a statue and a couple of Rohirrim with Forge Bleeds, they can actually melt through your ends. No problemo, you know? The level 2 peasant was able to destroy this one. He didn't capture it. That's why he's going back. But the, uh, the Rohirrim will be there just in time. What you can do is capture and demolish to stall and buy some time, you know? But he was a bit too late for this. The Rohirrim will be able to deal with the peasants, no problemo. And in the meantime, he is creeping with the peasants too. Hobbit plus the level 2 and level 3 peasant were able to take creep number 1 into the creep number 2. So lots of creeping for the Red Rohan player. He's actually taking almost every single creep from the map, including this one in the middle. And the Green Rohan will only be able to take down eventually this creep, which also will be contested now by the Red Rohan player. Now you need to bail away from this location. And, you know, the Red Rohan will say thank you very much for the leash, bro, and take the creep for himself, no problemo. The base is looking not too hot, but it doesn't really matter. As long as you have the farms outside under your control, you will always have a good resource income to do multiple things simultaneously. You can recruit more units, go for heroes like he did, and still fill up your base. Investing into Elma early game is always good because Elma is a lead game hero with his level 4 horse lord leadership, which will give the cavalry 70% more damage, which is kinda huge. And this combined with the Theorin leadership, you will have 110% damage and 50% armor for the Rohirrim and also Rohirrim archers. It's kind of crazy, you know? But remember, in an all-out fight, the Alvin Warriors are always better. Because the range they have 
and the ability that they can toggle on the weapon change to sword which kind of gives them the immunity to trample oh be careful very close run run oh my god it's giving me a heart attack over here man get away there bro okay i mean the ability that you can swap to the sword mode which gives you the immunity to trample you can't get knocked down i mean and also you deal some revenge damage kind of makes the elves to a great counter level three rohirrim is always going to be able to win no problemo the map is looking red to me and the green rohan player has literally zero farms outside zero farms outside we have double eoma from both the rohan players this eoma is all about to hit level three this eoma just almost level two the creeps in the middle are still remaining because they are trolls trolls are very really hard to be crept for the rohan faction because unlike the gondor faction citadel this system isn't able to shoot. So even if you lure the troll to your castle, you know, the, the troll is going to, you know, have a massacre there. Crush everything, my friend, okay? Okay, the Elmar should be able to level up quite decently here. All they gotta do is throw spear on cooldown every 25 seconds. It's a very fast recharging ability, as you can see and tell. So you can use it over and over again. Each time you kill a unit with the spear, you will get closer to level four, which is the power spike we are looking for. Okay. All right. Beautiful. Nice Sue. Okay. So, horse shields purchased, which is good. In a horse against horse fight, the shields are going to be good, but not as good as heavy armor. Heavy armor is always better compared to the horseman shields. Um, but remember, horseman shields are easier to be purchased because you don't need to build an extra building for this. You can, you know, build it from your stable once it's level two. The farm here is going to be destroyed. Uh, heavy armor purchased power point wise because the red rohan player was able to keep that much he's almost four power points in the bank after the heal and draft that's kind of impressive against only almost two power points from z mix the other rohan player the green one as you can see he can't fight this you know eoma level three this eoma all about to hit level four one more spear throw needed on one of the rohirrim and the horse lord leadership ladies and gentlemen will be unlocked Beautiful. Okay. I mean, he's still struggling, as you can see and tell. Maybe Theorin could be helpful. Gimli could be helpful. Gimli's extra dealing hella damage to the Rohirrim. Always one-shots them. Unlike, unless they have, like, really high levels like this. With heavy armor or Theorin leadership. Level 4 almost. One more hit needed. And this dude is also all about hit level 4. A bit still cloaked around this location. I believe he was able to creep this one. That's good. Two power points collected. The other Rohan player has four and a half though. Like, here are some of the power point choices you can go for. If you want to go for the, for the fast ends, you need to pick the Alvin Alliance Special Summon, which is kind of tricky because now the opponent has Horseman Shields on the Rohirrim, which makes them incredibly tanky against, against Al Alvin Arrows, you know? And what you could do instead is you could go Anduril Sword because eventually you will recruit Aragorn and the Anduril Sword will give you the chance and the option to rush the Cloud Break, which, by the way, in this matchup is worth so much because you can literally kill all his horses with the Cloud Break. Even if you can't stun them, they will get slowed down big time, which gives you the catch potential and you can run them down. And when it comes to the PowerPoint choices, you need to always think about this like this. You know, when I use this PowerPoint, what am I going to get out of that? You know, will I get momentum? Will I crash his bees? Will I open a couple of spots on the bees? Or will I be able to crash all his army? And from this on, I will also farm lots of power points, you know? Using power points to farm even more power points is like the most ideal situation. Spear troll, chunking the troll, but you need more than two. Eoma is getting lit up by the troll. The troll is on the hunt now, and good luck dealing with this bad boy. Now you gotta be building a tower or something, you know what I'm saying? That's going to be kinda hard. I mean, Elma can throw maybe one more spear. Yeah, yeah, they should be able to deal with this. One more spear. Oh my god, he's hitting it hard. Never mind, the horses actually crushed him there. Holy! You know, 70% damage on the on the Elma leadership. You know, even crushing the trolls. But because the troll, Rohan, the green Rohan player, was able to reclaim most of the map control without having forge bleeds or heavy armor just yet. But he's gonna have them. Archer range up on the fields now for the Red Rohan, but he needs to reclaim map control 
ASCP, you know? As soon as possible. Alright, so we have both players have the leadership. This player has also Theodine, and like this player, who didn't go for Theodine yet, but it's about to be changed. And this is a very strong Rohirrim army right there, boys. Very strong Rohirrim army. The pillage, auto leadership coming in clutch. You know, giving you always extra cash. Spear throw, boom, chakalaka. You can't fight this because you have, you have no Theodine leadership. You will lose this fight. Um, and yeah. Basically, all the creeps gone now from the map. And there comes the Alvin Alliance Special Summon. But this one is from Zemix, the green Rohan player. I don't think it's a good idea to summon it. The only good thing about the Alvin summon is that you might have the chance to kill some, you know, heroes. But because they have horseman shields and heavy armor, you, your, your elves don't really deal too much damage and they will eventually end up dying like this and fa give power points to your opponent for free. However, the... The elves will lead you later on to the end summon, but hear me out. Also, Alvin Wood leads you to the end summon, you know? So you don't need to go for the elves. He has four power points by now, and he only needs two more power points to unlock his end summon, okay? End summon, sneak you one behind the bees, open one, two walls, and then just go inside whenever you want to. Oh my goodness. Now, for now, it's all about horses running around the map. Having some small skirmishes, but most of the time it's about the map control they are fighting for. The farms being demolished, destroyed, rebuilt, you know. And also what is very important in this matchup is this dude, you know, King Theodine. Because we are looking at his experience level, and if he gets this one unlocked, he will get 80% armor for himself in the nearby Rohirrim warriors or archers. And also, Rohirrim archers are going to be very important because they are the ones who are the hero, hero killers, you know? Without them, you don't have a really big threat to kill the heroes. But with the Rohirrim archers, especially with Elma leadership and Theorian leadership combined in terms of damage, you have 110% more damage output, you will melt literally everything you're touching. Literally everything you're touching. All righty. Bad fight. The green one is dominating this fight, by the way. Kind of trying to get in. He's going to use the big heal. And they both need to disengage now before losing any horses. They got, he got a beautiful um, engage on, you know, with double leadership. Nice. Four, five power points for the Rohan player at the bottom. In two power points for the Rohan player at the top. Always gotta keep an eye on the heroes. Almost level 3 Theodin here. This Theodin over here is only oh, almost level 4 actually. Only one level needed. This is not gonna do too much yet. But later on maybe to counter the Cloud Break, you know. Cloud Break otherwise will be stunning you if you are level 1 or level 2. But I believe by the time your opponent has Cloud Break, your unit should be at least level 3, you know. To get the immunity. But the Cloud Break is not about stunning, it's about slowing them and reducing their armor big time. Like, they, they lose so much armor, which makes you kill them in a few seconds. You need more army first, two Rohirrim Arches, not gonna be enough. And what you can also need later on is Aragorn. Aragorn, with Andri Sword especially, is a very mobile hero, even though he's on foot. But he can, you know, almost keep up with the Rohirrim speed. And you can always keep him next to the Rohirrim archers, and this way they will deal even more damage, you know, 50% more damage. The map control is looking good for the green Rohan player. He's going now for Aragorn, Araton's son with the Anduri sword, that's pretty good. He has Harvest on his farms, level 3, level 2, they will give him lots of money. You can also buy it on the farms outside, but which is kind of risky, obviously. And you need to, you should be buying it on farms, you know, you will most likely keep them protected. Alvin Wood will be used. From the Red Rohan, that's why he's able to win this fight big time. Because on the Alvin Wood, the enemy horses have no leadership. Now, Aragorn is exposed. Turn and fight them with the Bleed Master. But there is just too much leadership, too many units. Spear Troll just, you know, doesn't deal any damage to him. He can always turn and fight. Aragorn is such a danky boy. No other hero would be able to survive this, you know. There is not a single hero that would be able to survive this. But Aragorn is not a regular hero. He's the king of the best, you know what I'm saying? 
All right, Yomon archers, peasants, why? Just sell them. You can sell them inside the citadel, so you don't need you don't need to you know feed power points. But you could also do is go for the outpost control, which is kind of hard to be kept alive though. Oh, ain't summon. Okay, now we are talking, but it's risky, dude. Like it's very risky to go in there, you know. This Rohan should be demolishing one of the structures now as soon as possible and build the statue there. He's going to throw rocks on the citadel, which is I don't think it does too much at this point of the game. He's towering up, but remember the towers can be targeted by the Rohir merchants. You know, keep this please in mind. Towers can dis get destroyed very quickly. Okay, he's committing. Doesn't do anything. He's getting prisoned here. I don't know what's going on, but it's coming fiesta is happening here. And he keeps throwing rocks at the citadel. Don't do this, bro. Oh, Elma, 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 Elma is gonna get away. We have GZ. This dude is gonna be killed by Aragorn. I told you. What a horrible positioning. And also Elma is going to go down. Oh man, oh man, oh man. And the ants did absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Look what the value is going to be from destroying the citadel. Nothing. You won't get anything out of that, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's why you always have to break some parts of the walls because they will cost a lot of money to be replaced and rebuilt. And even if you don't go in, there is always going to be a threat that you might go in later on. You know what I'm saying? Look, from this point, this was the player who summoned the ends. That's his power points. Look, the other player now. He got like five power points from this battle all alone. The mispositioning, um, the ends feeding lots of power points, Aragorn hitting like an absolute track, and there is a counter end mood, not from the spell book, but from the money he was able to get during the battle. Remember, Elma has the outlaw leadership, which means from killing those ends and also heroes like Theorin, he got so many power points. The glorious charge is recharging. And by the time the ends are here and they will break parts of the wall, the glorious charge will be ready too. Now, this Theodine has no glorious charge. So in a fight between glorious charge against non-glorious charge units, the glorious charge units will always smash everything. Yoma will be throwing a spear, get 32 for him killing a Rohirrim. He has not many Rohirrim arches, he has only one. I think he lost all the others during the battle. He is not very rich either. He has not enough money. He has to go for the for the statue. He has basically four structures inside the castle which are not giving him any money. Only three farms without harvest. So, and he has only one farm remaining under his control at the outside. Now the ends are here. You might always go for the Treebeard too. Treebeard, super underrated hero, gives 50 percent armor for these ends. They will become way harder to be dealt with when Treebeard is around. And also, he doesn't cost too much. You know, he will be there in 30 seconds. And he, he's a per permanent end, by the way. You know, permanent. As long as you can get him away with 1 HP, bad positioning again from the Red Rohan! Oh, be careful. Now the ends are raging. They will hit like a tractor. I mean, you might be able to kill them, but... Oh boy, there comes the glorious charge! The end is going ham. Kill the end, kill the end. Don't let him destroy the citadel. I mean, the statue. Now, it's a risky fight to take here. Because there is also Aragorn from the other Rohan player. And even with the Glorious Charge, you are not Immortals yet. And Cloud Break from the player who just went inside. Cloud Break is very good here. The end is raging, by the way. Smashing everything. And the Green Rohan is dominating this battle, I think. I don't know what's going on, really. But the statue has been finally taken down. It is a level 8 Aragorn. Yeah, he's demolishing everything. Demolishing everything. Not under his sword on this dude. They're not under his sword. He's barely able to hurt them. And what a big mistake, though. What a big mistake. What a... I, I don't know what to say. I mean, this mistake cost him literally the game. He had full map control. He was the one who is sieging. And he mispositioned his army. The decision-making was horrible by attacking the Citadel. <laughs> and then the turnaround. The, the punishment. That cost him the game, you know what I'm saying? Oh my god, let me know guys what you think about the mystique the Rohan player made in front of the castle of the other Rohan player. And kind of crazy what one mystique can lead you to. GG, well played, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, you know what to do. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck and as always, 
Stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.